Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome to the kitchen. You may hear Cindy making breakfast in the background. So I wanted to post a real quick video here and give you guys a follow-up to the last video I posted, which was about Ubuntu 16.10. When I installed that, I thought I was just going to keep it around long enough to see what it was all about. But I have really been impressed with the performance that I've gotten out of this. So therefore, I'm still running it. And not only that, I got some great feedback from the community and from Jeremy at the Ubuntu GNOME project. He sent me a long email which I posted on the Easy Linux Facebook page and you guys can read that if you want to. He has opened a bug about the printing issue that I talked about in the last video that if you went to the regular printer settings here, let me go ahead and take a quick look at that again for those of you who may have missed the first video. You can open this up and configure printers and it's very nice very well laid out. The only problem is it doesn't give you any kind of control over sharing the printer on the network with cups. And I went on the internet, found out that you can access the cup server through a browser on the local machine. That's a little wonky though, to tell you the truth. So he opened up a bug about that. Uh, one of the folks who watched this video sent me some feedback and said that you could enter this command and now, voila, you get the more traditional setup wizard little application here and you can actually get the settings to the cups server and you can set that up here so this is the more traditional one that you're used to seeing so you don't necessarily have to log into cups through the browser you can just use this which is all right with me either way it's just that in the gnome desktop there's no reference to this you have to type in a command to get it so there you go. Uh, honestly, I don't know why they decided to reinvent the wheel other than to come up with a nicer looking printer application. But there you go. It is what it is. The second thing that I complained about was that I couldn't install the Skype client in Ubuntu 16.10. It's just not available. Well, there's a reason for that, and that's because the one that Microsoft offers for Linux is terribly old, and it's for Ubuntu-like 1204 or something like that so it's definitely way way out of date it is still available in 1604 but not in 1610 however that doesn't mean that I can't use Skype uh, yet another viewer pointed out that the Skype beta web app is available and you can just go get it off the web and run it in your browser the one that you're going to download is going to be an Electron app anyway, which runs inside a browser whether you know it or not. So you can just access it if you're running Chromium or Google Chrome, and it works just fine. We can go ahead and try that out. So I will give the Skype call testing Hello. service a call. Welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. So there you go, it works. It's not the greatest, it, the sound quality is not as good as it was, at least on my end, in the actual app that you install. But that's perfectly okay with me. I have no problems with that because it works well enough. I'm actually getting away from Skype. Most of the people that I communicate with over the internet were using things like Facebook, voice chat, Google Hangouts and other stuff like that. So I do like to have Skype around for clients who aren't familiar with those other services and they have Skype running on their machines. Uh, if I'm going to be helping somebody to install Linux, then I need to be able to communicate with them through Skype. This will do just fine. It is good enough to get that done. I'm, I don't share video or screens or nothing. It's just a voice call. So that's good to know that that's out there. So if you run into a situation where you can't find Skype, then you're good to go. So thank you very much for all your feedback on that because it has made this an even better experience to know that the app that I couldn't get, I could get. Also, I want to say once again thank you to Martin Wimpress who has made the mp3 gain application available through an Ubuntu PPA along with a bunch of other stuff. I've talked about that in great detail in videos uh, in the past. Now I can't get easily, it's not in the repositories, the mp3 gain GTK 
front end, the easy MP3 gain package isn't there, but you don't need it because with MP3 gain, all you would do is just, uh, you'd run a command. So you would put the MP3s that you wanted to work on in a directory, and then you would run MP3 gain, and then give it the flag R. And then assuming that every MP3 in the directory is the one that you wanted to, then you could just do star dot mp3 turn the thing loose and it will go and level all the volume out so if some of you guys don't know what I'm talking about that's in past videos as well but I wanted to point that out so I was able to get that so this is a fully functional system here and it's working quite well another thing I didn't show in that video there's a couple of things I didn't show that you know just little things first of all this is the file manager and these are the lovely client side decorations that we hear so much controversy about in the community some people like them some people don't I like them just fine and this is the latest version of Nautilus that comes with GNOME and it's a little bit stripped down you don't get a lot of features in here like look I'm right clicking and it used to offer you can create a folder but it doesn't create an empty file that sort of thing. It does not split the screen if you press F3. That's been gone for quite some time. But it is functional and it does what it needs to do. And I haven't had any major issues with it. And an interesting thing is, is since I have the icons active on the desktop, watch this. So if I change the icon size in here, it changes on the desktop as well. But that's okay. It's no big deal. So that's what Nautilus looks like in Ubuntu GNOME 1610. Go ahead and get out of that. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was you do get the opportunity to change the background here on the desktop. And the application works like this. Somebody asked me about this, which is why I'm showing it. So you can choose a stock background or you can open up your pictures and choose things that will work in the background. So if we wanted to ch uh, change this particular background to this one, we just do that and then click select and bam it's done and you can also change the background on the lock screen so you can have that match up so we'll have that match up just for the purpose of this video I haven't changed from my Linux for human beings one but you see how that works now so if we want to put that back which I do just for consistency since I have all the other accounts on this machine set up that way no big deal pretty easy to work with So we can go back and put an, we can put another background up here. I can just leave this the way it is. It doesn't matter to me, really. <laughs> no big deal. So there you go. Uh, that's just a follow-up video. It's a couple of things I didn't show in the original. I have been extremely impressed with the performance of Ubuntu GNOME 1610. And according to Jeremy, 1704 is going to be even nicer. So while I usually never use interim releases, I'm quite impressed with how well this works compared to Ubuntu 1604. I also learned that Ubuntu 1604 is going to have a new dot release coming up in the early part of February. This is something that Jeremy told me. And they are going to have a kernel available where you can move to the 4.8 kernel, the hardware compatible kernel. And that's something that you're going to have to change manually. But to tell you the truth, I can just hang out with this until July and then reinstall it as long as nothing major comes up. And the workflow of GNOME has proved itself to be quite useful for what I do. Now, GNOME is not for everybody, but for instance, yesterday or the day before, I had a bunch of stuff going on at once and I had to answer emails. I had to look for files on the machine, so I had to look for a particular file. And uh, let me see if I can get this thing to pull it up. So I was looking for a script. There it is right there. And when I click on it, it goes right into the text editor, which is very nice. And I found that to be actually more functional than a lot of other search results in other desktops. Like in Cinnamon, you can't search for files that way. It just searches for uh, the programs on the system and in the unity desktop yeah it'll find files but then you can't click directly on it to get it to just open up so that's kind of a 
this is actually is a lot slicker so I've been very impressed with this also having all the desktops available right here and uh, just with I can have a whole bunch of applications running and there it is and then I can go over here and find the other application the other thing that I did I did one make one small change there's an extension that changes the control tab functionality or rather the alternate tab functionality ordinarily like if I had two terminals open I'll show you here real quick so I'm gonna open two terminals I got two terminals running on this desktop when I hit alternate control or alternate and tab you see I have two windows that I can choose from what the normal behavior is is just to group the windows so let's run over here we'll jump into no well, I don't need settings I need what do I need that's not what I need I need tweak So if I open up the tweak tool, jump down here to extensions, I'm going to turn this one off and then you're going to see the difference. So now it shows everything that's open on every desktop. So now you see the screen recorder. I don't like that. When I'm on a desktop, I just want to see what the one is. And then now this shows up in groups. So what I have to do is, is keep holding the alternate key down, use the down arrow and then I can use the arrows to choose between the windows. That's a lot to choose between like windows. So that one extension I did install, well I didn't install it, it was already here, I just turned it on. So now the functionality looks like this and that's much easier for me to deal with if I have more than one window of a particular application open. Other than that I don't plan on going extension crazy. A lot of folks have said, oh you gotta try this extension, you gotta try that extension. I'm not a big fan of that. I installed the weather extension just because I think it's cool, but this is the extensions that are actually running on the machine, and you see that I've got two. All right, that's enough for me. The regular desktop, the way it functions, is fine. Thanks for watching the video. This was intended to be just a quick little follow up, show you some things I missed, and tell you how surprised and impressed I have been at the performance that I have gotten out of Ubuntu GNOME. 1610. I used to run Ubuntu GNOME as my main desktop when I first started out playing around with Linux running it full time. That was Ubuntu GNOME 1404. That was fine. It had a few little glitches. Uh, ever since then when I've checked it I found that there was a little buggy, you know, it was a little slow and that's why I didn't keep it around full time. But this time around they have really smoothed out the bumps. So kudos to the Ubuntu GNOME 1610 team. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great stories about Linux. And we will talk again soon.